Glory to Jesus Christ, glory forever. For the past 25 years, I've been privileged to be a part of St. Tikhon's family. I have uh, seen hundreds of men come here and be spiritually formed and theologically educated to serve the church in various capacities. We have an incredible record of, of those men becoming ordained deacons or priests or even bishops. They've been blessed with the ability to draw upon the oldest monastery in the New World, to be guided by spiritual fathers, and to have available to them the full complement of liturgical services every day of the year to learn how to serve them and how to love them. Just seeing the liturgical life lived out here since they, they, they don't miss a beat at the monastery. A lot of these services I've never been a part of before. So it's great getting to experience those. It's giving me a frame of reference because God willing, you know, I hope to also be a priest one day and, and be assigned to a parish. You have to come here. You have to experience it. It's, it's that immersion in the liturgical life and prayer life which changes you over time, service by service, season by season, you're changed. So it just works on you, slowly and slowly and slowly, like water beating on stones, and over time they become smooth. The more students that come here, the more priests we will have for this church, and the more the Orthodox Church in America will grow. St. Tikhon's is unique in America because our founder, St. Tikhon of Moscow, he grew up in Russia at a place that had not only a seminary but a monastery. Um, he knew the importance of that kind of formation and what it gave to him, uh, what it had to offer for the church. And when he came here to America, uh, he knew that in order for America to be a successful mission, uh, to have uh, a great outreach potential. He knew that there would have to be something similar in America. So St. Tikhon's Monastery really is St. Tikhon's vision. It's his heart, it's his intention, it's his very life. Everything that he wanted the American church to be, he wanted it to begin here. He knew that it was exceptionally important in the, in the foundation of, not only for the monastics, uh, for the foundation of the Orthodox Church in America, but more so for the priests that would come here to, to be trained um, and for the, the impartation of grace that's a formation of the heart which is so important. It's not quantifiable, it's not something you can see, but it's real. It's amazing for a guy like me to know that I'm serving at an altar consecrated by St. Raphael of Brooklyn with St. Tikhon and St. Alexander Hotovitsky and St. Nikolai and all those American saints who have stood at the altar uh, at our monastery chapel. So that I think is, is the most um, kind of draw-dropping thing is to know who has stood in the spot where on occasion I stand. It's said that you know the, 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 the main classroom is the classroom of the kleros. There's nothing, no matter what you're called to in the church, there's nothing that will prepare you more than the life of the church itself for whatever you're going to engage in. And I would also say the, the, the quality of the instructors here is top notch. We have a faculty that is renowned in the world published as scholars and serving here already three decades. We have clergy that have served the church for 30 years as pastors for them to emulate in terms of serving the people of God. The most important thing that I, I think I want to say is that the church needs men to serve. There are parts of this country that have no churches. We need to be out there establishing missions. We have priests who need to retire. We need priests to replace them. There are existing parishes that need to be revitalized with the 
young blood of newly ordained priests. The Lord is calling men. He says, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you to go and bring forth fruit. The Lord may be calling you. If your heart has been burning to serve the church over the years and you can't escape that burning, then you need to think about coming to seminary. I remember when Silouan had mentioned to me about wanting to attend seminary. And my thought was, no. The thought of uprooting was just a very difficult decision to, to consider. As a mother, your concerns for your children. And so, you know, we agreed that we would uh, visit that following summer. When we were visiting, we were here with our whole family. We got to stay in the guest housing. And being there just on the grounds and, and being able to just walk about with the family and seeing how they reacted, it impacted us. And of course, even being here, knowing that this is a place where saints have tread, you can feel it. You can feel the spiritual depth of this place. the whole family just loved it. There is this, there's this peace and it's incredible. You cannot describe it. You have to experience it yourself. And once we visited, we knew that this is where we were gonna come back to. And I remember the day that we had to pack up and go after staying on the monastery grounds. Solomon and I looking at each other and we were just, I remember our eyes were so watery and thinking, we don't want to leave. But to think that we had St. Tecons to look forward to. Give me that peace, you know, that strength that I needed to, to leave knowing that this is where I was going to come back to. And yet here we are, and I love it. It just, I can't explain the joy that I have and, and the peace of being here. And here my little five-year-old loves it. He has so many friends. This place has um, just so many families, so many kids. It's almost as if you're in an orthodox cocoon, you know, this place of safety where you're surrounded by orthodoxy and it is just so beautiful to experience orthodoxy at a monastery. It's all been awesome, I guess that's the way I'd put it. There's something about it. It's easy to say, oh, it's a holy place or this is holy ground, but you can feel it here. And it's not gonna, of course, you can't transmit that through a video lens, it, it's, it's not going to come through a screen. It's a leap of faith. So is marriage, a leap of faith. You're, all the ducks are never going to be in the water. People are wondering, how can I leave where I live and come to South Canaan? We'll help you. How can I afford to make this move when I have to give up my job? You know, we'll scholarship you. Where am I going to live? We'll find a place. It's a leap of faith. You need to come. If the Lord is calling you, just come. Make that leap of faith. We will help you. The church will guide you. And the Lord will bless you. Pray about it. Thank you.